send the video to you all after this as well. But welcome to All About Reusable Blocks with me today. I'm super excited to be hosting this with you. Um, as I noted in the description, I think that reusable blocks are the most slept on feature. I find myself frequently noting them in my online workshops. So I was like, okay, I keep bringing this up. So maybe I should have a session where I just talk all about these reusable blocks. Cause I think that a lot of people aren't really aware um, that they are exist, um, probably aren't aware of how useful they are. Um, and so I just wanna make sure that you have this as a tool in your arsenal going forward. Um, so yeah, we already talked about where you're tuning in from. Anyone that's just joined, feel free to share. Um, a bit more housekeeping is I have enabled the live transcription service, so feel free to use that and follow the subtitles as we're going. Um, if you have any questions, unmute if you'd like. If you feel comfortable speaking, you can just ask the question directly. If you want to type it out, that is okay too. You can share your question in the chat. I'll keep monitoring the chat to make sure I can answer those as they come up. Um, and then also, if someone's asking a question and I don't get to it in time, but you're like, oh, I know the answer, please go ahead, please answer it. I'm, I'm always happy to be humbled by someone else answering and sharing what they know about WordPress. Um, and then when you're not speaking or sharing anything, uh, just kindly mute your mic. And lastly, if you at the end of this are like, wow, this online workshop was great. I want to get involved. They are all run by volunteers. So I always try to encourage people to maybe reach out to me or my co-host Alvaro um, if you're interested in putting on a workshop yourself. So let's have fun. So I got a few answers to this already, I think, in the um, the questionnaire. Like, what would you like to use reusable blocks for? So have some people saying, you know, that they don't use it at all. Avaro's like, I use it for reports. Is there a use case from your site where you think maybe I can, could I use a reusable block for that? It could be anything really. If you had like a blog, for example, maybe you're always blogging about rabbits. So you have a template for talking about the rabbits color, type of rabbit, long ear, short ears. <laughs> it could be anything really. Well, with that in mind, um, I do wanna share with you more. Oh, okay, we got a call to action. It's good, yes, definitely. So if you have a site where maybe you're selling something or you're trying to engage with people, um, but you always use the same kind of call to action button, um, that would definitely be a, use, a great use case for a reusable block. But I'll share some other ones. So before we get into that, what are reusable blocks? Why do we care about this? <laughs> uh, so they are basically user-generated block collections. And when I say user-generated, I mean created by you. You, the site owner, you go in and you say, I want this block to look like this, and I want it to be in this order, and then I'm going to save it because I know I'm going to use this collection of blocks that I put together across maybe multiple pages or posts. Um, so it's not something that typically you can get out from maybe the pattern directory. This is created by you um, and for your needs. So you can also think of them. I'm going to share this news uh, snippet I grabbed for folks. Yeah, testimonials well, would be a great way to use that. I actually have that listed. So you, you win, you win a prize. <laughs> but you can also think of these blocks as snippets of globally synchronized content. I'm getting this great from that page I just shared because I thought it was a great definition. But when you update the reusable blocks in one place, um, any post or page that you insert that block into will also get updated as well. So this is really cool because if you maybe have a, a content edit you want to make to a reusable block, but you don't, and you have that block on many pages, but you don't want to go in and edit each individual one. Um, a cool thing about reusable blocks is that when you edit one, you can edit them all. And so that is like a fast way to ensure that your content is displayed accurately on any page or post that this collection of blocks is on. And also it's really cool that it's dynamic in that way. So we kind of had a few of these sprinkled in in the chat, the, the use cases. But yeah, think about things like a recipe card. If you are a food blogger, you probably have a set amount of things that you are you 
repeatedly use on your site, right? Um, the name of the recipe, the ingredients, the, um, the measurements and all these kinds of things. So something that's repeatable, testimonials, however, um, project checklists. Like if you have a way of running a project every time and you have a website where you're maybe showing this, or maybe it's an internal website, you can just have a checklist, save that as a reusable block, and there you are. You don't have to keep uh, creating this block by hand each time. Uh, another one I thought would be great is you know, reviews. If you have maybe a one out of five star review system and you wanna just have the template for the review there, that could be one way. Um, if you have repeated imagery, social media buttons that you post regularly on certain pages or posts, or for some people, it could be ads or affiliate banners that you sprinkle in posts at certain points. So saving that and being able to just put it in quickly is a really great benefit of reusable blocks. But wait, aren't they just templates in that way? To this, I say, no, I know it's, it's probably, especially when we get into it, we're gonna deep dive and look at what these look like in the back end, you might be tempted to be like, oh, but it's just a template. Um, but I do wanna dispel that because uh, they're, especially because of the terminology of templates within the WordPress ecosystem, we wanna be careful here. And so templates, you should think of them more as for the design structure of pages or posts, like your front page, the way you have it organized, for example, but not for the content. You don't want to, especially in the site editor, um, get your template ready for your homepage and then start adding a bunch of content there. It's better to control the content elsewhere. Um, also the templates in this case with the site editor, they don't transfer over when the theme changes. So, um, and I'll show you that as well. Like if you create a template with the 2022 theme and then you switch to another theme, that's not necessarily gonna carry over. Um, and then also templates are meant to be a bit more static here. So you're not going in and changing them all the time. It's mostly aesthetics. So I did wanna share before we dived in here today into what reusable blocks look like, how we can utilize them, some other benefits and considerations. Um, so some of the pros or the benefits are that these reusable blocks, they can be exported and imported into different sites very easily from, you don't need to do anything technical about it. Um, I think also the beauty of reusable blocks is that it's pretty non-technical. So you get the benefit of having these block sets that you can keep using multiple times and not have to write code for it. And then you can also export something beautiful, reusable block that you've made and put it into another site, maybe for another client or another um, pet project that you have. Um, and then they are transferable across themes. So you don't have to worry when you're switching a theme if your reusable block is gonna be there or not. Um, like with the template, it may not be there, right? Unless you hard code that into your template. And then also, um, as I noted earlier, that the changes to the reusable blocks, they will propagate to every other instance of this block. So that's a really good benefit. So you don't have to keep going into other places and editing it there. One thing I do want to note for consideration, and we're going to see this in play when I'm in um, playing around and showing you what the reusable blocks can do for you, is that if you don't want a certain aspect of the block to be um, replicated across all of the blocks, there's this button to convert it to a regular block. And I think some people tend to miss that, but we'll show you kind of like the warning signs of if you're going to edit your, um, your reusable block to uh, instead of just adding new content to it without disturbing it across other places it might be in. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because this was a lot of information I just shared. Are there any questions so far about maybe the pros, cons, uh, the way I've described it? It's not a template. All right, then we're gonna move a bit along into showing what this all looks like. So we can put this theory into practice here. I always like to share the setup that I am using um, and I'm gonna share some links in the chat here. I always also share the slides. So don't worry if you don't get all of these links right now, when I send out the video, you're also going to get um, access to these links for the future. 
Um, but this is a setup I'm going to use. Local is my local WordPress install um, software of choice. There are many other options though, same with the theme 2022, um, that's pretty basic. I have other options to show you. And then I always in my sessions like to use the most recent version of WordPress um, just to make sure it's stable. And I'm also testing the new features that come out. But uh, I love giving people options. So if you are not a local WP fan, here's um, some other local setup programs you can use. Uh, and then also here's some other full site editing themes you can play around with. Um, Bjork actually just came out yesterday or like this week. And I, I thought, I love the, the singer Bjork. So I was like, okay, this is great. <laughs> There's a theme called Bjork now. Um, of no relation, I guess, but I thought that was awesome. So I threw that in there and a couple other nice looking full site editing themes that um, I thought you all might like as well. Okay. So that's enough of that. Um, let's jump in to my site. So I've already gone ahead, here we are, and started my site. You can see here, it's not secure, but don't worry because it's just a local site. So it says .local and I'm in the back end right now. I just logged in. This is a completely um, vanilla WordPress install. There's no content here in this site. But um, we can put into practice some of the use cases we were talking about that reusable blocks might be great for. So for example, maybe I have a page here. Let's go into the sample page just to keep it easy. All right, it has all of this content already there for me. Great. Um, this is just an example, right? So. I always like to open the list views just so I can see what is available already in here. It's just a bunch of quotes and paragraphs, but that's okay. Um, but maybe at the end of this page or in the future, other pages, I want to have um, my social media buttons appear and maybe a author icon or something. Um, so to get this started, I'm going to press the blue button here, the block inserter button, and I'm going to create a column. So this is really the creation process of it all. This reusable blocks are of your own making. So I've got my column here. And in one part of this column, I want to put in, and I'm going to do a click here. Oh, sorry, I'm going to click here and insert, I think I can do, yeah, let's do the post author. So that would be, in this case, it's admin. It would probably be your name, Alvaro, Pepe, whatever your username is on your site. Um, and then you can add a byline if you'd like. She writes. But over here, maybe next to whenever I have my um, post author showing, I wanna also have my social icons. Where can people find me on the web? So there's a couple of choices here. You'll see, especially with 2022, they keep adding more little templates. There's some patterns I can bring in myself. I can also just use this social icons section here and start adding, uh, sorry, social icons block and start adding some stuff myself. So maybe uh, I have Twitter here and Facebook, if I can spell, I'll get it. Facebook, and then um, let's do TikTok. So if you've never played with this before, you can click out in this section to keep adding more icons. You can also um, adjust how this looks. So maybe I don't want it to be all the way to the left. Maybe I want it centered here by justifying it. Um, and that might give it more balance. Depends on how you feel about it. Um, I'm just gonna put Twitter here. And you'll see also when you add a link, the button gets activated. Right now, these two are still pale, um, but after adding the link, you'll see it gets filled in. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what is this? Doing? What do we do about the 
Okay, we'll pretend that those go to my, my handles of choice. Um, if you haven't played with these before too, you'll see that there's also some options for the social icons to kind of play around with their design. So maybe I want to have this background be white and, oh, sorry, the icon color be white and the background be this nice deep teal across my site. So what's great about this is that not only does the block choice that I've selected get saved when I create the reusable block, but also the, um, the styling that I've done just now should also save. Okay, so we have this block that I might be adding to different pages here. Let's click here. I'm clicking the columns because I want these two columns and it's grabbing all of them. I'm gonna click these three vertical buttons. And then you see here, it says add to reusable blocks. So it's really as simple as that. I make what I want um, to have repeated on other places and then I add to reusable blocks. And before I do this, actually, I wanna show you here, I don't have any, this is a new site, so I don't have any reusable blocks yet. And so you see here, when I click on the block inserter, it just says blocks or patterns. Okay, let's see how that changes once I commit this to a reusable block. So here, we'll call this my social icons here. And you'll see here two things change. Now it doesn't have the uh, reusable, or sorry, the columns icon. It has these little, little diamonds. So that's signifying to you that it's a reusable block. And then the edit, being able to edit it is kind of locked in this way. It's, it's like a sort of grouping, um, but you'll see this other button has appeared here, this convert to regular blocks as well. So I want you to keep this in mind because uh, we're gonna look at it in, again in a bit. So now I've created my first reusable block and I'm gonna press this inserter button now. And voila, we have another option here. Now that we have one reusable block, it's, it's already there, ready to be brought in as much as possible. So let's play around with that. Um, another way to grab your blocks or insert one is to do the backslash. So I named this, what, social icons. Oh, name your, name your reusable blocks a bit more uniquely because look, <laughs> this is a bit of a faux pas, isn't it? <laughs> I have two blocks where I'm like, oh my gosh, which one is it? Um, luckily, I know that I started with a column here. Don't do what I just did. This is <laughs> definitely make it a bit more unique so you don't get lost here. Um, but clicking on my reusable block, now you can see it's kept the style, it's kept the um, structure that I've wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the second one. Why, why do we care about this convert to regular blocks button? Well, the reason why we care about that, and I'm going to update this page. And we're going to go out and we're going to create a new page. We should always have my little Laura Mimpson. Come here, you. Let's just grab some Laura Mimpson banter here. Page. Oh. All right, so I've got this test page here. And now I want to go to the block inserter, add my social icons, poorly named, but we can rename it. We'll do that. Um, social icons, reusable block. And what if I get in here and I start doing, she writes poetry for a living. So now I'm editing my reusable block, right? Um, and what kind of repercussion does that have? If I click on publish here, now I have two options. I have this new page, so it's like, do you want to, you know, publish this page? Yes, but it's also asking me, do I want to do something with that reusable block? Because um, the following changes have been made, and the change was I added more text here. So it's warning me here that, you know, hey, if you save, you're going to change your reusable block. So let's let's just see what happens there. And I so I've saved the change, and I'm going to publish this page. So I'm going to open up my pages once more. And now that sample page that we published before, where it just said she writes in the, in the byline, 
it should now be updated to she writes poetry for a living. So that's right there, the dynamic change that will happen when you save your reusable block edits um, when you're even on another page or post. If I don't want that to happen, that is where that convert to regular blocks comes in handy. And I think this is also where this feature really shines in the way of, it's not a template, but it keeps <laughs> a structure for you that you've built yourself, right? So maybe in another case, um, I have, let's say, let's build a table, for example. Uh, keeping score, number. Okay, so I've got this table here. Maybe it's for a certain purpose, keeping score for a sports game, but the games keep changing or something. Um, so I'm just gonna select this uh, game. Actually, let me do that game and uh, score. I'm not, I don't know why I chose this analogy. I'm not really that into sports. Uh, here, game and score. So whatever game it was, and then the score. And I have a site where I'm, you know, tracking a baseball game series. I'm sorry if this isn't a good analogy, but you know, the, the multiple games in the series and I want different scores. Okay. And this might happen over the course of a few years. So this, this reusable block won't be used just for this season. I think uh, it might be used for the next one. So I've made this table. I'm going to add to reusable blocks. Let's call it the baseball season score table. It's a bit more unique. Um, and so instead of just going in and editing here now, you know, game one, game two, and then 200 or 300, um, because if I click update, that's going to save the block itself and propagate along other places where this is listed. I'm going to do a convert to regular blocks. So let's show you all what that looks like before I do. I'm going to save this update. And we're going to save it here because now it's, it's fine. There's nothing inserted into the table. But if I go into another page now, let's call this the base, baseball games. And I'm going to call that baseball season score table. If I'm just like, okay, this is game one, baseball game, maybe season one, this is game one of season one, and then the score was 200 and 300. I don't even think it goes that high in real baseball, but that's fine. Um, and then we're going to publish this and view this page. Now we have this baseball game season one and the scores, but everywhere else that this is listed, like on my test page, for example, permalink. Oh no, now it's changed here. So this is why you wouldn't really want to just go in and edit for something that you want to keep using multiple times. Um, you would instead go back here. I'm in baseball season one. I'm going to say, I'm going to update. So it's a blank slate. And then we'll see in my, uh, in my test page, if I refresh, okay, there's no more scores. They're all gone. It's a blank slate. But now if I go into my baseball game season one, I'm going to convert this to a regular block. I'm going to put in that information I had before and update. So what should happen is in my baseball game season one, these numbers should stay great. But in my test page where I also have this reusable block, this should not be updated. So as you can see, when I refreshed, it didn't update. So that's why this convert to regular blocks um, button is really great if you want to you know, you have a recipe card, right? And you have a certain structure that these cards should be in, but you don't want that structure to get messed up while you're inserting new content into that, um, the collection of blocks. Okay. Any questions before I move along here? 
I'm also happy to repeat anything I did, or if you're like, hey, actually, can you build out this kind of thing? I, I'm happy to do that as well. Granted, we only have 32 minutes left, so nothing too major. So I see Willem says it would be a nice feature to inherit the styling changes from the reusable block. Oh, I see what you mean. So instead, if you have a, I think I see what you mean. If you have a block where you, maybe this table, for example, you want to just change the style of the table for the, for the yeah, that would be really nice. Mm. I, What's up, Alvaro? Do you know something I, I don't? No, no, no. I was just thinking with global styles, you can define your own styles for certain blocks. So if you want all your paragraphs to be bigger, you can go to global styles and define that there rather than doing it uh, this way. But, um, or just convert it to, you could, in, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, you can't like keep the style Mm, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting thing. Mm. I don't know anything that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this, I was this just thinking. Like, that's all right. This is like an exploration. So if anyone else is like, hey, maybe like feel free to, you know, chat or speak up to um, you're very right that in the global styles of a block theme, that's right, well, um, you can change certain blocks. So but if you're like, I want to have some of my tables be green and white in alternating colors, and then I just want this one table to be like red and another color, that is probably where it gets like a little tricky as well. You could give it a CSS class name to that block and just write a yeah. tiny bit of CSS. If you can, if you are good at CSS, you could totally do that. <laughs> Okay, feel free to ask more questions. Um, I'm gonna, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going, oh, cause there's a, there's a big one in the chat. Uh, Sandra, your topic. So you're asking when you change a picture that you have in the media library, it will be changed on all the pages. So uploading the picture with the same file name and eh, delete the original, but it was not. Ah, hmm. yeah, I think we can do this for sure. So let's let's test this right now. Actually, I think we can make this hmm. a reality. So, um, let me pull up an image, and this is definitely a use case I, I noted. So let's let's play around with that. Um, let me also have some photos. Let me ew. here. We'll, we'll grab my little cartoon self here. All right. So, oh my gosh, it's so big. I also like that it, it saves, you know, the the sizing and stuff. So we'll we'll play around with this too. Um, let's make it centered. So I have this image that maybe I want to have on multiple pages. I don't want to go and dig for it in the media library. Uh, la la la. So let's see. Um, I've got, got this image, just clicked on the three vertical dots. We're gonna use reusable blocks. Um, and let's call this Destiny's um, image for pages. And I know that this is something I wanna have on every, ooh, why did you move like that? <gasps> Are you a bug? Why aren't you center anymore? Hmm. Ooh, interesting. I convert to regular blocks do we just find oh i'll take a note of that, that yeah oh like yeah <laughs> we have the happiness engineer on the line <laughs> i think we might have found a little bug here um but wait let's pull up since i saved that so destiny's image for pages okay we found a little oopsie here it should be centered because that's how i saved it but you can see here that it's it's pulling up so here, I'm just going to save this uh, test page now. And then let's go into let's go into our sample page and edit this and add that same image. So Destiny's image for pages. We're going to update. 
Okay, so uh, this is my test page. I'm gonna do a refresh. <laughs> my multiple little cartoons are there. These, these are both a reusable block on the uh, sample page as well. It should be showing there. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into this here. I'm not gonna convert to a regular block because I wanna make sure that this reusable block is edited. And I guess I need a new ed uh, image, but let's, uh, I need more fodder images. Uh, I think I downloaded some plant pictures lately. Here we go, here's, a, here's my plant pic. There you go. So now I don't want the picture of me. I want this Monstera everywhere. Let me make that smaller. And this is this one up here is not a reusable block. So I'm, I'm going to just remove it. I just press backspace. Um, OK, so let's see if this saves correctly. It's asking me, hey, are you sure you want to do that? I didn't convert to regular block. I'm sure. So now on my test page, which we're editing right now, I'm going to do a refresh. We got the Monstera, that's what we wanted. And on the sample page, we should also get Monstera. So that is how you could definitely do that. And please let me know, Sandra, if that is not at all what you were hoping for. Or if you wanna explore anything else. So another thing about this and reusable blocks that I want to show you all is now we have a little selection going on here. So let's go into the manage reusable blocks section. And I will say, I don't think <laughs> there's still not a great way to get here, which I'm, oh. Oh. No. <laughs> I updated all the blocks where I used it. Huh. No, 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 that's totally, that's totally fine. So you wanted to, instead of adding it, adjusting the image in the reusable block, you were hoping that wherever you had this image in a reusable block throughout your site, if you change the image in the media library, that would adjust it across the site in those blocks. You can you might need to resort to a plugin to do this, but there is a plugin out there that allows you to just replace the image rather than re-uploading re -uploading it. Yeah, this is kind of outside block editor territory, really, in a way. Yeah, I see Willem's also plus oneing that, that thought, Alvaro. So it is possible, Sandra. It'll just need a, an additional plugin. Okay, so I did want to share with you all another place where you can edit these reusable blocks. And um, as I was getting to, it's not easy to get here, to be honest. Uh, I do wish there was a section on like this side in the post area. I don't know where you could get to it because you technically have to get to it from a post or page itself, right? That reusable block section. So if I'm in here and then manage reusable blocks. So that is a bit of not so great news, but once you're here, um, you won't have to edit your reusable blocks within a page. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that helps, Sandra. Uh, you won't have to edit it within a page. You can edit it directly here. So this is great because now I'm, I don't have to worry about what else might be affected on the page that I'm editing. I can just start editing in um, this one space for my reusable block. Um, so yeah, if I wanted to you know, go back to that previous image, oh, and not have it so big, make it small again and update. Now on my test page where I had that reusable block, bam, it's back to little cartoon destiny. And same with the sample page, it should do the same. So this is a way for you to make those global edits of your reusable block without having to enter a page itself, um, in addition to being able to do that on a page or post. 
Oh, yay. There's an open issue to find a better spot for reusable blocks. I'm so happy to hear that because I think that's why this is this is such a slept on feature because people don't know where to find the reusable block section. <laughs> okay, so now, well, we know how to find the reusable block section, so <laughs> we'll go and navigate back there. But you'll see here, there's options to export as JSON or import from JSON. So this is where what I was talking about being able to pull from another site into another site or take from another site um, comes into play. And I want to show you all taking from another site. I have this other site that I created, um, my first recipe blog, where I have like a recipe card in some of these posts. So let's have a look here. Um, I'm going to go into my Japanese udon soup. And maybe all of this, which is grouped, I want this to be a reusable block. And this isn't the best way to do it, to be honest. Actually, wait, I think I might have one. Hold on. Actually, I have one. I saved the recipe cards here. So let's, let's go from here. OK, so maybe I want the full recipe card for another site. I'm going to click on this export as JSON, and you'll see that the full recipe card is downloaded down here. And I'm going to jump into my other site, this all about reusable blocks one, and let's import that. So I grabbed it, import, it says successfully. Ooh, I wish it would refresh the page for me. I'll refresh it myself. <laughs> so once you've refreshed, now you can see that I have the full recipe card. But before we look at how it looks here, let's, we didn't even see what it looked like on my other site, right? So let's just do a, a potatoes to potatoes comparison here, if that's a saying. Uh, so it should have a space for me to insert an image, some text, you know, how long it takes to prep stuff, jump to recipe, some buttons here. You can see also in this, um, list view all of the, the things that should be here in my block that I've just imported. And let's go edit. And lo and behold, there are some stuff that does not contain some happy areas. Let's double back here. But that was nothing. So don't be scared if you see that on the import. I'm not sure what. It might have actually been um, hyperlinks, to be honest, uh, that were in this or something. Oh, or it was nothing. But I've got the basic structure of the recipe card that I had for my other site. So that's a way that you can um, reuse content or blocks that you've already compiled together in a certain structure on another site. So this could be a very powerful tool if you're working maybe as an agency and you have a bunch of clients that maybe use this kind of structure for some of their posts, you can just export it and use it on another site very quickly. Okay, so actually I'm going to update since that had that little error. Right. Now that is kind of the bulk of my show and tell here. I think agencies would rather use a pattern for this. Probably agencies are a bit more technically uh, capable for sure. Um, so maybe a, an editor would probably use this recipe card rather than uh, a bunch of uh, more technical people. Are there any types of content you all would like to see made into a reusable block or do you have any other um, capability questions you'd like to discuss?
trying to leave space for, for the typing. <laughs> Not so the question that came up is is the access to the edit reusable blocks option limited to certain roles. I would say probably not. I mean, if you're not an editor, someone that can edit. Do you know this, Alvaro, actually? Mm, I, I'm not aware of any limitations as to who can access which blocks. I haven't heard about it anyway. Hmm. That would be something interesting to to try out, though. Um, you can like, you you can exclude certain blocks if you go to the editor settings. You can uh, specify what blocks can and can will and won't be displayed for users to add. But I don't think you can discriminate and say this user or this user role can use these blocks. It's kind of an overall setting, as far as I know, anyway. It's a good question, though. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if I added like a contributor, would they? I think contributors, let's see, author, because they should have post access. And then I log out. Now I have option to add a new post. Hmm, I'm seeing some third party stuff. Some independent plugin authors are working on this, um, but nothing in core. So there's this, which is interesting. Let me share a link. Yeah, it looks like the author can't edit um hmm. yeah so an author will would not be able to edit one that's made hmm. by someone else my other account was an admin but they can add new that makes sense you can other you can use someone else's reusable box but can't edit them that's, yeah as an editor i as mean as a, an, an author, author. Mm -hmm. so that is good to know um <laughs> I'm just gonna pick my block. It's very basic. We just want to see what happens in another role. Uh, and then double back here. And it should have, huh. Oh, okay. Sorry, it wasn't at all. It's just mine. There you go. So you as an author, if you create one, you can edit your own and you can export it. You can also you could export a block made by someone else and then re-import it and you, and edit it that way if you want. That's a mm. bit roundabout. Um, but yeah, that's very interesting. I, I hadn't thought to explore that. So um, already it's kind of locked down if you don't want other authors to edit other people's um, reusable blocks, but want them to still access it. And then I have a feeling that an editor would be able to, to do this. Uh, plus 23, big email. Uh, hmm. Let's see, let's just create this editor account just to test it here. And user to log out. Three, three. So here we go. All posts. Let's edit the hello world. And I just want to get to the reusable manage. Yes, I want to leave. So yeah, an editor would be able to edit all of the reusable blocks. So that is very good to know. And then of course, if you're you're more technical, you can lock down certain blocks as well um, with the use of a plugin, or you can um, custom code it yourself. Yeah, that was a good question. I, I didn't know. Now I know. Today I learned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me too. Any other questions, friends? Happy to explore anything else in here.
All right, I will take that as a, I am full of information. <laughs> uh, so I had a couple more things on my slides. I just wanted to share here. So, aha, I'm giving you all some homework. <laughs> Um, you know, try to pick a full site editing theme and apply it to your site. That'll give you um, some great access to uh, the block editor. Um, I'd also love if you would try to build out and save a reusable block for yourself and just play with it, maybe be wild and convert it to blocks and edit some aspects of it, um, or just dynamically change it across your posts and pages. Um, and then also, if you are able, uh, you should join the Make WordPress Slack. That is where people such as myself and Alvaro kind of live <laughs> um, to help you all learn and practice what we share on WordPress. And then also, if you want to stay connected with me, um, you could find me, Destiny, on the Make Slack. And here's a link to that. The make WordPress Slack, uh, poplfox.org, or the Destiny WP on Twitter. I should take off my site because I used, I kind of bombed it doing one of these online workshops, so it, it doesn't look any <laughs> pretty, but um, those are some ways that you can stay connected. And then also, if you aren't aware, we have the online workshops calendar, which has more information on more and exciting uh, workshops that you can try to attend going forward. But thank you for coming to mine. I had a lot of fun talking to you all about uh, reusable blocks today, and I hope you learned something new. Thank you, Destiny. That was, that was interesting. You learned a lot of things. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad. Let's stop the share. I will stop this recording.